Hey guys, welcome back to episode two of the A to Z podcast series. This is going to be a fun episode. So we thought, you know, we had a look at a few um, news articles and saw some ex- exciting launches and a few exciting things happening. And the riding season has started with MotoGP gone on as well. So we just thought we'll make a podcast and just talk about general motorcycle stuff. We are planning to do this maybe once in three months or something like that. I think that's a good number as to what. Uh, yeah uh, happens in our country right yeah but i i want to i'm just excited to cover that <clears throat> or maybe not so excited this would have been our third podcast <laughs> <laughs> but the second one was recorded at the track at what 5:45 yeah. pm <laughs> with so, with with multiple different cameras because yeah. one camera did not have enough space with and all the, of my fantastic track footage <laughs> And the uh, and the camera was mounted on a motorcycle. On a motorcycle, yeah. <laughs> and somebody was holding on to that motorcycle. It was dark, but the thing is, it had some great audio because the because people are still practicing and yeah. bikes were whizzing yeah. by. But anyways, well, yeah. uh, once in three months, not a bad time to do a yeah. podcast. Yeah, so. we'll we'll go back to the racetrack. Yeah, definitely. Pretty often, so definitely, we'll we'll yeah. do make sure we do. <laughs> so today we'll talk about we'll talk about some pretty exciting topics. This is being recorded around the nineteenth of April, twenty twenty three. So the news is relevant as to that point we'll start with uh, the first few uh, exciting topics that you know that have come to light recently so a few motorcycles have been launched and have been leaked uh, that are new projects that are coming out not updates or anything but new projects that are coming out the first one that i would really like to talk about is the bajaj and triumph collaborating and making a 400 cc scrambler type uh, motorcycle and that you know the images have leaked out right that is something exciting should be for the audience to decide right <laughs> Well, I mean, see, for me, any new product category coming into the market yeah. is definitely exciting. Whether it is good or not, we will find out once they launch. Right. But new options available, wow, it's exciting! Yeah, <laughs> and that right. looks good. I mean, that yeah, looks it's got it good. looks it looks like it it's got a pretty high uh, ground clearance. It's mm. got like some uh, it. It, if it's a 400 cc i don't know who's designed the engine from like the basic look it looks like a bajaj designed triumph looking sort of a engine but i'm sure triumph has some sort of you know engineering back end to it gone to it right what was interesting to me the chain drives on the right hand side like my technical and, mind goes towards that first. and i read about it so they say that the engine design from the outside is like the bonville uh, okay. with with the clutch on the right or oh sorry the clutch on the left and the gearbox on the right which is kind of unconventional yeah. Yeah. and that's i think where the chain layout's coming from hmm. uh but yeah i just hope this is not a flipped image for copyright purposes or something right i don't think that will i don't think that it it'll still have the sprocket on the exhaust side no oh <laughs> boo <laughs> <laughs> right so that's what that is i think it's coming it's coming with uh, some good uh, kit on it it's coming with upside down forks it's coming with you know front and rear disc brakes and i think pretty pretty good looking neat li- that, neat looking uh, uh, motorcycle e- exhaust with two barrels is yeah i think it will sound right? good yeah. if you if you've heard the latest gen dominars they also sound pretty good right because they've also got a double yeah, barrel okay. exhaust I, right I know, but yeah for a single cylinder they sound really really okay. really well so i think i've got some good hopes from this i always love triumph engineering um like no, yeah. no bias there <laughs> but yeah, i always like triumph engineering we'll see i think what what do you think the price point is this of this is going to be i read I read okay and this is not my knowledge or anything I read somewhere about it being about 3 and a half lakh rupees right and right. if it's between the 3 and 4 and cc category the price is probably right uh right now these pictures don't do justice to the quality of a 3 and a half lakh rupee motorcycle obviously but we'll wait for the final version well, it's a, it's a pre production so we're yeah. not ex- looking into you know too many nitpicks into that yeah but we'll see we'll see what it does it'll 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 be an exciting entry into the market but triumph coming at at that uh, price point i mean i really don't understand these concepts of you know brand collabs everyone knows that it's built by bajaj uh this again don't please don't quote me on this right but this is what uh, i think ktm was a great manufacturers manufacturer in the europe right and ktm kind of made their own business very profitable by collaborating with bajaj this was i think about 15 or 13 years ago and i think everyone's following suit now now this is my layman understanding of why they are doing this there could be other more different reasons as well Hmm. right interesting yeah, yeah interesting but i hope so just like ktm i <laughs> hope that just like the 390 series it's a bike designed by ktm 
manufactured by Bajaj, designed by, by KTM. KTM. You know, so all the calculations and everything have gone as per KTM specifications. Okay. And I hope the same thing applies to your. I hope as well. What do you think it's going to? When when do you think this is going to launch? Uh, they said festive season 2023. We have a lot of festive seasons in India, so <laughs> <laughs> I hope it is not as early as Ramzan or as late as Christmas. I think Diwali sounds Diwali, like the, yeah, yeah, Diwali, Diwali. Right. So we also found out that Bajaj has taken over uh, the sales and service of Triumph in I the country. I can discuss this to no end. I'm telling you that. Uh, see, Bajaj being in the Indian market for I don't know so many hundreds of years, right? Uh, they probably know the Indian market really well. I don't know if they know the general super bike customer, right? Uh, and I, I don't want to bring this up here, but we hear a lot of folks not being very satisfied with how uh, uh, service centers kind of treat them and the motorcycle. So this is something we are going to have to watch very closely, hmm. right? Yeah, but I think. I think it's going to be good because Bajaj is not starting something from scratch like they did with the KTM 790. I think they are taking over a service network which was already built by Triumph as per Triumph standards. So if Bajaj if Bajaj takes in this network and tries to learn as to what the Triumph customers like about the Triumph service and because people like the Triumph service, right? So yeah. if they learn from it, then they can improve on their other aspects. Yeah. Or they yeah. can go the wrong way and try to force their way of doing things, which is just which going is to hurt Triumph service. Exactly, and and you know I'm sure Bajaj does something well and Triumph does something else well. As long as they both come up with what they do well and give that service to the client, I think that would be great. Uh, like I said, let time tell the real story. Yeah. So moving on to the next uh, motorcycle that has come up recently, and uh, I think Harley themselves leaked these photos out of their upcoming motorcycle that have been built in collaboration with Hero Motorcycles, the biggest manufacturer of motorcycles in the world. Um, and there are they are like pretty faded uh, photos, but uh, they have some quite nice uh, details. I think this is a oil cooled um, engine. Uh, it's got again upside down forks. It may or may not have double, you know, front disc brakes, but it definitely has those Harley uh, rims uh, on there. It's got an oil cooler, so yeah, a pretty exciting looking uh, motorcycle. That is doesn't seem like the image of the bike that's going to be launched, right? It seems like no. someone's render. Yeah, that that what you are looking at is someone's yeah. render, but this this these photos. You know, this this got a single disc. It's got some Harley type uh, um, rims. Um, no radiator, but it does have an oil cooler on there, right? Uh, these are the photos that have come out. It looks interesting. It looks interesting. It it'll be pretty exciting to see what they do with it. Yeah, not bad. Uh, my observations, right? No radiator, oil cooler, which means this is not a high performance engine, right. which is okay. No problem. Yeah. Then instead of a mono shock, they have those twin, twin shocks yeah. behind, right? That is mm -hmm. like taking ten steps back, because a lot of Indian manufacturers got bold a couple of years ago and introduced mono shocks, and that's how motorcycles have been manufactured over here in India now, right? So I don't know what that means again, unless it is really to give the bike a retro look. Could be. Right. Could be. Uh, then there is a futuristic looking round headlamp. Mm -hmm. Still retro, still retro. So I think they have tried yeah. to hold on to some uh, design, design the, cues from uh, Harley, Harley because yeah. see the top of the line Harley Davidson still have twin struts in the rear, yes. right? And unless they are going for all out performance, which I doubt this motorcycle uh -huh. is, they would like to re retain the look. I mean, for the road, the twin struts, if tuned properly, can still give you some decent, uh, you know, handling and ride quality. Okay. So it, 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 the tuning will matter more. Fair. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't have no clue when uh, this is going to get launched. But the photos ask, have come yeah. out. I have no idea when it's going to get launched. But the photos have come out, so I think it was interesting to just discuss this, right? Then uh, a very this is exciting. This is very <laughs> exciting proposition because it's going to it's going to give more, as I said, more options to yes. clients. Yes. So KTM have launched the Adventure 390. X. No, no, sorry, no deja vu there. Yeah. They have launched the 390 X in yeah. a new variant of the Adventure 390. So what they have done is they have just gotten rid of all of the electronics and a big part of the market just says, hey, I don't need these electronics. I am so, so, so opinionated forth. about it, right? Because I personally, I have, I have I have the first gen. 
which had kind of no electronics except for the ABS, ABS right? which, which doesn't work now. Which doesn't work anymore, <laughs> right? Uh, and it runs perfectly fine, <laughs> right? Perfectly fine. Uh, yeah. And then on the other hand, I have the 790, which has all the electronics you can ever, right. ever think of in a motorcycle, right? And then uh, I've ridden so many friends adventure, 390 adventures, right? And I always thought a lot of those electronics are overkill. Like it's an adventure bike, it probably can do without the fly-by-wire yeah, type yeah. deal, right? And then the cornering ABS and all. And I don't know. Maybe it is really required to some riders. It wasn't required for me. And I consider myself the most average rider out there. Right? So, <laughs> okay. so I am very happy that KTM could slash 60 grand from the sticker price of the Adventure 390. That's of the X showroom. So overall, yeah. it makes a bigger difference. Right? Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, definitely, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they have gotten electronics, gotten rid of electronics that we that were luxuries on a motorcycle correct right? so correct. i, think I mean they still great. they still have the abs on there it's just not cornering abs it's yeah, standard ABS. standard abs then right. the tft i think is non color or something is that also i i think if that's the thing that's okay right i mean no i wasn't going to watch tv on no it anyways problem. right yeah, yeah and yeah. Uh, it doesn't have fly by wire and it doesn't have a quick shifter up and down Oh, very Which good. Is, yeah, exactly, right? I, I didn't need a quick Like shifter, the KTM right? quick shifter was anyways, the, even no, in no, the no, 390 series. <laughs> <laughs> like from my experience, as per my riding style, the KTM 390 series, you know, quick shifter was always uh, iffy. I, I could never get it to work as I wanted it to work. So, you know, getting all of those things off, getting the traction control off, I don't think you need that in a yeah. 400cc motorcycle Correct. anyways, right? Um, getting all of these things off, I mean, if someone wants it, you have them, but getting the option of getting to choose that and not getting to choose that is brilliant. I think all yeah. the manufacturers should do that uh, to some extent. So that is something I'm very, very and if about. KTM is listening, I want them to get spoked wheels in the Indian market. I'm not the only guy saying this, I'll be honest. There are a lot of people out there uh, who will benefit with spoked wheels. And there are so many people out there that the costs will be justified. The way I look at it, right? So please do your research and see if you can really... I think, I think KTM wheels. should just get the whole power parts catalog yes. properly in the country. Yes. Like, I agree like yeah, pr price it price it high if you think the volume is going to be low, yeah. but at least give that option. Yes, and I think I that agree. applies to a lot of uh, manufacturers. That is one thing I think lacking from the Indian motorcycle community is lack of options. Yes, I agree with you. Right. So okay, let's move on. We'll we'll go to some from the adventure category. We'll go to some uh, racetrack options. And uh, MotoGP has started uh, this year. Um, we've been wa we've watched about I think three races uh, yeah. up until now. The first uh, one was screened here. Right? Oh, first yeah. one was screened here. That was fun. Yeah, yeah. Right. So a uh, few pointers this year. This year they've introduces introduced sprint race, uh, just like World Superbike uh, does it, and F1 experiment with experimented with it last year. So qualifying sets the grid for a 50% distance race of the main race that is called the sprint race which is held on saturday that gives half the points up until position 9 or 10 i think and then your sunday hosts your main race the grid is still set from qualifying not from sprint race so that is something which is uh, gone uh, this year and there have been you know uh, opinions on both sides of whether it is good or bad and so on but we'll we'll discuss that uh, in detail so uh, have you watched all the races first of all the first race was uh, screened here so i watched it yeah I think the second race we missed. I think no, we watched it together. No, we the did? second race. Yeah, one yeah. Of the, I think I missed. We one watched of the, the second race. You you missed the last race, I think. Okay, I guess. Yeah, but you we watched the second race also together. The second race was a bad race, right? Yes. Yeah, that we watched. Yeah, that we watched uh, together. Uh, Valentino Rossi prodigy. Yeah, Benzeke. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They won. They won. He was crazy in the yeah, rains, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So but who do you who do you think is uh, is like really doing well? We had in this the discussion sometime back. <laughs> <laughs> but I I don't know much. I haven't been following MotoGP much, right? I I haven't been following anything much. Uh, but uh, that guy Bezeki, right? Bezeki is how you yeah, say it, yeah. right? Yeah. I think he did a fab job in the rain. Yeah, he right? did. Didn't he? Uh, I mean, you know, everyone has their uh, <clears throat> coaches and mentors and all that, right? But I think this guy, uh, he's really come up the curve. I've seen him race in the past and everything and doing what he did in the rain, just phenomenal. That is racing. That is yeah. what we were out there to watch, right, all these years. And I yeah. think he's done a brilliant job. And he's pretty yeah. much a rookie, isn't he? Yeah, he's a rookie, right? He's yeah. a rookie. He just has the VR46. VR46 backing yeah, to, really. to do him. So, yeah, I mean, he's definitely uh, someone to look out for. Yeah. I'm a bit disappointed with Yamaha. I'm a Quartararo 
fan, not really a fan. I like all riders, but I like have a soft spot for Quartararo. So I'm a bit sad about the performance of the Yamaha motorcycles. But with the current, you know, technology moving towards in really in the favor of the V4, I can't really blame Yamaha for it. But if someone can make the inline four work, it is Yamaha. So Yamaha needs to, you know, pull up their pants and do something about it, right? So that's that. I think. Um, Ducati definitely have a very strong motorcycle as they've had. I mean, really, really strong motorcycle. I don't know what they're doing in their top end, man. There's some, there's some voodoo happening over there. Yeah, for yeah, sure. For sure. For sure. But my, my, I think I would, I would uh, really put uh, Vinales and uh, Alish in my, you know, top favorites list because I really like uh, Aprilia and both of those riders as well. Alish did a phenomenal job last year. Uh, if not for a few mechanical and technical malfunctions, he would have been really up there. Um, let's see how he performs this year. I'm happy that Vinales has come from Yamaha and got a seat in April and he's doing very well. I think he finished uh, on the podium or fourth, uh, fourth, I think, fourth last race. Okay. So, so he got points. Yeah, 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 very good, very good, uh, yeah. good points, right? So he's he's doing really well. So I think I think it's going to be an exciting season. Uh, we'll see how we'll see how it goes, but it's a good mix of Ducati riders. Uh, I mean, Alexis Marquez is doing really, really well. I mean, Alex he, Marquez, he yeah. had a uh, he had a pole position which was fabulous. So he's doing really well. I, I feel bad for the guy who got took out in the first race because he had to miss his second race also, right? Oliveira. No, no first race was Bastianini. Yeah, Bastianini. he got taken out because of. Yeah, the second race Oliveira got uh, taken out. Okay, so Bastianini is going to come back so. when? Do we know? No, Bastian got uh, taken out in the first race. He's still out. Oliveira also got taken out in the first uh, race. He missed the second race. He was back in the third race. Okay. Um, Bastian will probably come in the next race. Okay. But he didn't deserve to go through what he went through. Yeah. Yeah, but that's racing. Well, what <laughs> can you do about yeah, it? Right? Do about so the sprint race has really split uh, opinions. Um, as as fans, as you know, people who watch uh, MotoGP, unlike him, uh, you know, I I watch all of them, and m the more the racing for me, the more fun it is. You know, more time we can watch these guys push to the limit. The other end of the argument is that it is really tiring the riders. Out yeah, yeah, watch and a lot of people are saying this, right? Uh, then you know, the whole uh, internet is always divided over things, mm -hmm. right? So some people are saying, well, when you take home zillions of dollars in cash, you might as well be available on all Saturdays and Sundays. You're right, but uh, well, if they are getting tired, then that's how they are going to race, being tired, and then that's what's going to take the fun out of the racing, right? So there has to be some balance between how much do they get to race and how much do we get to see them, or or whatever it is, right? Uh, well, I think I I. I I think, see, for I, w I wouldn't say it's about the money, but it's about people who are at the pinnacle of motorsport, they're at the yeah. top level, yeah. right? And if you think about it, it is two and a half hours over, like two hours of racing on the Sunday, half hour of sprint, uh, one hour of sprint race on the Saturday, apart from your practice session. So all we've done is added an hour in the whole racing format right now you are right it. it's a change and the riders are resisting the change because yes they have to work much harder to you know still race in both of these those races but i'll tell you what is going to happen right let's say they resist and let's say the pace comes down and everyone just says okay we'll just take it easy right hmm. it'll just take one rider who will work that extra hour in the gym yes. throughout the week yes. come and then blast through the whole field yeah, on the whole is. two races and then everyone will just say hey man the bar's gone higher we need yeah. to climb that up i don't think it's an unachievable bar although yeah. having said that i have no opinion on this i have not been on that stage and yeah. i am nowhere close to their fitness level yeah. but i think as a as a physical capability humans are doing way way more is what I feel. And somewhere there has to be a limit, right? Yeah. yeah. You can't expect a man to run like a horse ever, right? So. Right. <clears throat> right. So yeah, that's been that's been a sprint race and whatever has been happening through the season. Now we'll discuss what is about to happen in the season, which is very exciting for us. Very exciting. Because, <laughs> because <laughs> MotoGP is coming India. to <laughs> India. Yes. So it's 22nd to 24th September, uh, Bharat MotoGP. It is officially announced, officially happening in the country. Um, but there is still work pending on the circuit. So yes, MotoGP has yes, had a look yes. at the circuit and they have said that a few changes need to happen uh, to the track layout, to the safety, to runoff areas. I don't know if it has got to do with track surfacing and whatnot. And as far as we know, up until a few weeks ago, that work had not started, right? And even if it starts now, well, technically they only have four and a half months left for 
doing whatever they have to do and then testing it in monsoon in monsoons and i'm just going to come to that right and then there's this monsoon fact i don't know when does it rain in delhi do you know when it rains in delhi same like bombay same like bombay yeah okay. same like bombay probably not as much as bombay but yeah it it probably can rain right starting june yeah. which means they only have like less than a month and a half right yeah. so that's a little concerning yeah. uh, obviously we first went out to see if we can buy tickets online and that hasn't started yet but we have some friends <laughs> and we're hoping those friends are our friends when tickets are available right so uh, yeah. so let's see how that that's going to work out for us and uh, you know uh, don't quote me on this but me and zain were discussing that you know we will try and get all of our audience some sneak peek from wherever we are on yeah. the track right when the motor gp is actually happening right for so, sure for sure wherever yeah. we are we'll will definitely share that uh, yeah. experience but it's going to be exciting to see uh, how they price the event uh, in this country you know it's a very price sensitive market and we it'll be exciting to see what people are willing to pay as well as what they are expecting people to pay and uh, that's something to look out for right because see india is a huge country right we are by the time we are done talking probably another billion people <laughs> will be added right and we are currently at 1.4 billion or whatever right and uh, and then we have a lot of people who are fans of something exciting and jazzy happening but that isn't what we are fans of right we are fans of people who actually appreciate motorsport for what it is right and i don't know how many of those people can afford and they will turn out and how many of the people chasing jazz will turn up because because that will decide how the crowd is going to be right and uh, that will really decide if it was a great event or not so yeah. let's hope for the best uh, i'm sure a lot of our audience is Are real like racing fans and stuff. I so I think definitely. I think. We hope to see you <laughs> there. Yeah, we hope to see you there. Yeah, and. Uh But it'll be interesting to see some MotoGP bikes yeah. going around the both the international oh, yeah. circuit. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And uh, did you read about the wild card entry? Oh yeah. I yeah. I have no clue what is happening with that because, like to be honest, if think about it, if I am racing in a championship, right, and if I have a if I have a Grand Prix in the calendar. where there are wild card entries happening with some local guys who i have no problem with but think about it from the riders point of view what if one of those guys takes out a championship leader uh i'm sure somebody else who's in the management committee thought of this right mm-hmm. so the way i look at it like if you ask me to do it i'll probably just like pull the pace down say don't go all out racing this is probably just to show or just to make people feel included uh so this is not going to be racing so just take it easy I am very excited to see what our Indian boys can do because I think to some extent this is great for the Indian racing yeah. scene right yeah. if these boys can like really show that you know there are some fast boys in the yes. country even if we can keep up with the pace of you know the riders out there right that really shows that there's some talent and yeah, yeah, yeah. that is going to really pave the way for future riders exactly you know first of all MotoGP coming here has put india on the motorsport yeah. map yet yeah. again after what 10 years now right and if something like this gets pulled out of the hat even better india will stay on the motorsport map for quite some time right and we do have great young talent oh, we do. Uh, in india right now right so i just hope all of this like works out really well yeah. for us yeah yeah so the racing yeah. scene really is like it's developing very well with a lot of the ktm just did their rc cup yes. you know and the royal enfield did their you know continental, the continental cup, cup yes. yeah yeah yes, so yes. all of this is all of this is com- coming up well um, new tracks are being built i just hope yeah. they get completed fast i'm tired of you know going 1500 kilometers to ride to a race yeah track. exactly and i want to bring up a very important point right uh, it is great to watch it is great for the people who are in it but let me be honest it is also great for the people who want to be in it more people doing the same thing kind of reduces the cost a little bit so it makes it mo- even more affordable for the common man right yeah. and honestly uh, i'd be lying to you if i told you that hey i am not in for a cheaper racing weekend right i definitely am right so i just hope it really works in that yep. uh, like yep. you know for is in that direction so yeah all right now we we in other news, <laughs> other news. <laughs> so we we've, we've left the <clears throat> most exciting topic for me uh i think it's for him as well to the very end and this is about a certain uh, manufacturer which has been quite quite uh, like it's ste- steered away from the big bike segment in yes. the country for a lot yes. of years yeah. and it's now take making a comeback in the country and we are very very excited about it we are obviously talking about yamaha so yamaha has announced uh, like very tasty items that are coming into the country but we'll start with from the basics and go upwards the first thing which i am really you know i don't know how to even say it but aerox 155 the scooter it now gets traction control 
Yeah, you know where it's coming from, right? No. From the Adventure X. <laughs> <laughs> they removed it. They removed it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why why it's uh, got it. I mean, it definitely, I think, unless it makes like no price difference whatsoever, then I'm fine with it uh, having it on the scooter. But if it's going to make even like a little bit of change for the pricing, I'm like, really visualizing when what is an Aerox going to be doing for the traction control to kick in, yeah, right? Yeah. I can't think of anything yet. Yeah, I mean, if if you are sliding around on an Aerox, either you are like an extremely skilled rider and you don't need traction control. Or you are someone whose motorcycle is definitely not in good shape yeah. and you need to visit the workshop. Yeah. Right. So, I don't know what's happening with that, but well, you know, options. Why don't you tell us in the comments? Yes, you tell <laughs> us in the comments. Right? Who needs Aerox traction, traction control? control? Yes, that's yeah. the question. Yeah. Okay. So, we move on to the next category of motorcycles that they have brought back into the country with one addition. So, the beloved Yamaha R3 is now making a comeback. Beautiful motorcycle has had some great history in the country which they discontinued I think for BS4 uh, reasons and it is now combined with its naked brother the MT-03 yeah which is a beautiful looking bike because the MT-15 gets sold in India right yes the yeah, MT-15 gets I think sold it's, in a, India. it's a good looking motorcycle and then Yamaha with its quality and stuff mm -hmm. you know I think it's mm -hmm. going to be a great motorcycle, the MT-03. Refinement obviously looks yeah. very nice, quality very good, so great yep. motorcycle. Yamaha's, uh, what do you call it, chink in the armor has always been their pricing. I right. don't know how that's going to go. Really right. 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 So, I think the R3 is mechanically not that uh, different. It's still a parallel twin uh, engine that, uh, you know, produces about 41 odd uh, BHP. It's pretty much the same. It's made some changes to the visuals of it. It's got a different fairing. It's got an upside down fork in the front, uh, which was a big uh, uh, downside of the older R3. I think the yeah, one place be. it lacked was suspension. It was set okay. up way too soft. Now, with the upside down in the front, that is going to really help. I hope they have tuned the suspension to be a little bit more sportier. Now that they have a naked sibling, they can keep the naked on the softer end of the correct, spectrum correct. and make the R3 yeah. a little bit yeah, more the, uh, the sportier. Fair, yes. I don't like, I mean, honestly, I, I like the previous looks better. Of the, the R3? R3? Yeah. yeah. The is, empty, that, is that the new one? Yeah, that's the new one. The new yes, one is it? Yes, okay. yes. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I mean, the previous one looked better than this. But TK, this is not, uh, this is not an in-flesh yeah, uh, I'll, I'll reserve my judgment yeah. till then. The MT series has always been this radical alien yeah, sort alien, of a design, alien, alien, alien. right? And uh, that is something, you know, um, it's quite subjective. I am not saying I don't like it. I'm not saying I do like it. The MT, when I first saw it in photos, the MT15, I was mm -hmm. like, I mean, this doesn't look that good. But when I saw it in the flesh, it was yeah, quite, it looked, it was quite it good. good yeah. So we will see what, what this turns out. To, I mean, we'll see what it looks like. I hope the R3, the new shape looks as like looks as good as the old one or better than the yeah. previous one but yeah it's exciting that this bike is back in the indian market uh, we'll see what what uh, it works out to be i think we are expecting the pricing to be around 4.5 lakhs something like that which uh, the i think the previous r3 was always i thought it was overpriced but we have been comparing all these bikes to the rc390 which mm -hmm. was very competitively priced so I don't know if 4.5 lakhs is a good price or not. Let the market decide. The market, right? yeah, 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 yeah. I think the R3 and the MT will be separated by about 20, 30 thousand. Probably uh, yes. Just about, yeah. just about that. But parallel twin, I think it's going to be a pretty exciting yeah, yeah, yeah. motorcycle too. Very to creamy, go. smooth parallel twin. Very, yeah. very nice, yeah. very nice, yeah. very nice. We move on to the next uh, category which i am i am personally the most uh, excited about and uh, this is the r7 and the mt07 yeah. which is now coming into the country do you know when it is coming because i cannot wait yeah i'll tell you what uh, i was reading this on another publication right so apparently the r3 is already out and if not it's probably going to be out now uh, it's going to be followed by the R MT07, then the R7, and then the MT09, or I think YZFR1 or whatever, right? So, uh, except for the R1, everything's coming this year. Right. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> this motorcycle just looks fabulous to me. And I have a, I have a lot to say about it. Okay. Yes, looks fabulous. I'm sure it's going to be a great handler and everything. But then you tell me, 15 years ago. Uh, Yamaha was making the R6 with 120 bhp. 
126 why after 15 years is yamaha making uh, an r7 a twin cylinder with 75 or whatever 73 bhp why why the de evolution of things well because people were well the market decides everything right and they did not they, the market of the middleweight super bike super sport was definitely going down because people thought well see this is a four cylinder 600 cc motorcycle that i am getting for 13 14 lakhs or 12 13 lakhs something something like that mm. and i have got a liter class a uh, super bike mm-hmm. again a four cylinder right which has a uh, 1/5 or 1/7 1.7 times the power that this motorcycle has and it is just about like maybe a few lakhs more okay that is what that is what was basically going on you can take the ZX6R analogy here right how much was the ZX6R for i think it was 14 lakhs or something like yeah that. about yeah. 13 around 13.5 okay. something like that right and how much was the ZX9 when the ZX6R I was out i think it was 16 lakhs or something two and a half so for 3 lakh rupees more you get yeah. a a uh, 400 much cc more motorcycle. much more powerful motorcycle yeah, see yeah. the suspension the chassis and everything remain pretty much in the same ball but you get much more power out of it right and at the end of the day you get the liter class badge yeah, on yeah, you right, right. I agree, okay. so why would people then go for uh, uh, the 600 cc inline four category of a motorcycle that is point that is point 1 correct which now says and and i don't mean to interrupt you right but, right but which now says that this bike with a twin cylinder 75 bhp Is oh, it's a hundred and fifteen. Really? This I is the O seven. So. Oh no, sorry. Yeah, this, this is, is the about seventy five bhp. Seventy five bhp. So, so then the, this has to be substantially cheaper than a liter class Yamaha motorcycle. Has to be. Right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So let's see how that goes. So the ZX ten R as of now on road Mumbai is priced just under twenty lakh rupees. Okay. Right. So it's around the nineteen lakh. So unless this is for twelve and a half, thirteen lakh rupees. And It should be it sense. should be under twelve lakh rupees. I mean, I'm not claiming it, but uh, financial logic would say that it should be under twelve yeah. lakh rupees, and then it would make a lot of sense. Correct, right? Correct. I mean, see, I am I am very excited because all the super sport Yamahas that are there, whether it is the R1, whether it is the R7, whether it is the R3, whether it is the R15, all of these are excellent base platforms. for a race motorcycle i agree they are beautiful race platforms yes. for a race motorcycle yes. because and i don't mean it in the stock form right you get a motorcycle in the stock form and then you upgrade it to whatever race that you are planning to do and it transforms the motorcycle into something that is like race winning definitely out there right yes. i mean the world superbike spec r1 has in 2021 beaten the ducati panicale and the zx 10r and ended the zx 10r ka reign over so many years right and it's a fabulous motorcycle so with all of those things i think i am really excited about the r7 mm-hmm. uh, whatever shortcomings there will be of the r7 i am sure there will be some excellent aftermarket options out there i mean yeah. that's where my mind goes right what can we do to it to to make it better to yeah, make okay. it to make it better one it yeah. looks it looks fabulous to me it looks the part for sure right yeah, look it, at it it's yeah, definitely look at it I, I am more excited because for a few years the middleweight super sport category has been empty. Yeah, There hasn't been nothing in it. Been buying either 15 year old used CBR 600s Correct. or two three year old used ZX 6Rs, right? Right. Yeah. Now now see the 675 or Daytona is discontinued, yeah. right? The ZX 6R is uh, discontinued. discontinued, right? So there's the R6 is uh, in discontinued. It was almost never here. Yeah, yeah, it was almost never here. Yeah. So there is nothing in the super sport category. Right, the 650 R and F. I wouldn't call them a super sport. I will call them as a sport to tourers. Uh, right, but that like there has been nothing exciting in this yeah. sector of the market. And the Aprilia RS 660 actually started this uh, parallel yeah. twin middleweight uh, yes, yes, trend. Right. I mean, right. obviously, all of the manufacturers. Right. It has come, but it's priced absurdly. <laughs> but you consider the RS V4 versus that, and it is priced reasonably well. The RS V4 is close to thirty lakh rupees, yeah. and the uh, RS 660 is around sixteen seventeen lakh rupees. That's yeah, that makes sense. In in comparison, it's great, but it's still a very expensive six hundred sixty cc twin cylinder motorcycle. But from what I hear, it's a beautiful motorcycle. I'm very see, surprised other, we never got to see any on the road. The other problem, the other problem is that all of these motorcycles are CBUs. Yeah, which and sadly the these are also going to be CBUs. Oh damn! The R7 and the MT07 are going to be CBU, so they might be pricier. We don't know, yeah. but that is that is one of the caveats. If we take away the CBU, we bring it bring them as CKDs, CKDs then yeah, that might bring the price down to 12, 13 lakh rupees, yeah. which it is very yeah. appealing for that motorcycle. Yeah, very very appealing. Because I, in my opinion, it's one of the best looking yes. bikes out there. I right. Agree. 
same with this we'll see we'll see how it uh, we'll see how it goes can uh, you see the naked version please oh yeah i know you always yeah, like the naked exactly. versions <laughs> you know if i remember right the mt series motorcycles have a splitter under the front headlight Do you, did you ever notice no yeah it do they it looks like a splitter something that go in the front of a car or whatever the oh, mt15 has one i don't know if it's really it really needs one but yeah, it, it's <laughs> okay. there yeah but these photos look like the mt07 have uh, conventional forks that would be uh. interesting i doubt that's what it is but but no i mean all the photos have a conventional fork system on the mt07 that is not going to be great really yeah but we'll feel find out we'll find out that's what we are here for that's, <laughs> that's what we are here for right yeah so we'll see we'll see what these are you know price tag and when they are coming in but i am very excited i mean i hope a lot of people go in for these motorcycles now the next motorcycle which i think you should be very excited about is the, the mt09 and and you know i just had to go through uh, what engine config it has so it's a three cylinder 900 cc engine cross plane cross plane very balanced smooth creamy 115 bhp and we'll not talk about the price right now but uh, yeah that is going to be one hell of an exciting naked motorcycle right and and you yep. know I'll, i'll tell you what i i keep i keep uh, thriving on naked motorcycles is because of their versatility i'm not saying that you can't ride a daytona on the street or you can't ride a uh, a zx tenor on the street but riding a naked right. is so much more easier yeah 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 you I can mean, No, no. I mean, on our roads, you should not. Yeah, you should not. Exactly. I mean, our roads are not really yeah. meant for those uh, motorcycles. Which is where the yeah. versatility of a naked motorcycle comes in, right? You can have fun with it on the street and be within your limits. I'm not promoting rash riding, huh. and you can take it to the track occasionally and have fun with it over there as as well, right? So, so yeah. Well, let's see some more pictures of the MT09. The it, rear and the 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 nice. tail light really looks like yeah, nice. Yeah. That's a really nice tail it light. It is a very nice muscular looking motorcycle with all the yeah. Yamaha tech. I think it's it's just a in terms of looks, it's just a less flashy Z900. You can say that. Yes. I I think it it could be because of it's the color scheme. It's a less busy Z900. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little bit more smoother. It's got some funky headlights for sure. Yeah. But apart from that, the motorcycle is still pretty, you know, like straight, even, smooth. Nothing, nothing radical going on over there. Is this the biggest uh, naked Yamaha mix? It oh, is. Oh, they make the MT10. Oh, they do. Yeah, MT01, I think, or MT10. MT01. The, the, the R1 correct. engine naked motorcycle. Oh, damn! But I haven't seen it much. Uh, not in. It's never been launched in the country. Okay. But they they used to make the FZ1. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Previously, okay, okay. right? Then they made the B King. If they were no, that, that was, was Suzuki. Suzuki yeah. But they made something in the V1000 naked. But anyways, okay. but they had the MT10. Then they had the MT9, yeah. MT7, MT3, MT15. Five. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. this this is a great launch. Yep. Uh, yep. This, this is, is this will be like internationally everyone like really uh, renowns this motorcycle as yeah. one of the most fun motorcycles yeah. out there. I mean that engine is like really really. We, nice. we have a couple of folks over here who own the older version of this motorcycle, and they swear by it. They really like it. It's it's smooth. It served them well for the past so many yeah. years. Yeah. It's fun everywhere on the street, on the track. Everywhere. And I mean so technically, yeah. it it makes a lot of sense because if I think if I think about it, the the inline three engine right is a very good uh, middle part between the V twin and the inline four. Yes, right. I I really like the inline yeah. three engine because it's got a good enough mid range. It sacrifices a little bit of the top end that the inline yeah. four gives, but it develops enough of that in the middle range. Right, that's one. Two, the my favorite inline four engine is the R1 uh, cross plane, just because of the cross plane crank and how it delivers power. Now, if you combine the inline three characteristics and you take the cross plane character from the R1 cross plane, combine those two, that should make a yeah, hell of hell fun engine. And and how many of us actually use the last ten or fifteen percent of an engine's power, right? Yeah, yeah ex- that's what I mean. How many of us? Like yeah. probably one yeah. out one out of fifteen people, right? So yeah. I think this is this is just going to be great for everybody who buys I, it. I I will still appreciate that extra uh, mid range for sure. Like yes. I love I love the street triple engine, but I still feel you know it's a little bit lackluster in the mid range and the and, and the bottom moment. for yeah. street use for the track it's absolutely yeah. beautiful. Yeah. But for street use it's a little bit lackluster and it it lacks a little bit of character that the European motorcycles have. Now this with the cross plane should absolutely solve that. Yeah. So you know this is going to be a really really uh, epic motorcycle. For how and much? 
well so <laughs> we were, we were just you know researching and we came on to this website which had uh, the price of the motorcycle yeah. and it had the price in rupees so i just thought hey, man how is this having in rupees and it is the yamaha motor india that have it on their <laughs> website right and it says it's like for 10 lakh 65000 ek showroom which is not bad for this motorcycle right? which is yeah. um, i mean think yeah. about it this is 10 lakh 65000 ek showroom what will the r7 and the mt07 be yeah if they are similarly priced they will be they'll, cheaper than this yeah yeah so they will be technically under 10 lakh rupees on road you mean no, no i, I mean think like, so even if they are less than 11 lakh rupees on the road they are still great motorcycles for that price point really yeah i mean this for 10 yeah. 65 i mean it will go up to what 13 lakh rupees something on yeah. road wherever in the country you are yeah. which is uh, let's think about it from the competition's point of view right the street triple is about 14 lakhs something Correct. is which is i mean this is cheaper than that i don't know what yeah. the z900 goes for uh, i think it is about 12 lakhs on road or whatever right yeah so it sits between the z900 and, and the, the street, street triple i think yeah. the monster is way more expensive than any of yeah, these yeah, motorcycles yeah i think it's about 16 lakhs if i'm not wrong but correct, yeah, yeah correct. it's definitely right. more so i think right. it is pretty pretty competitively priced yeah i think this is if the, the this o- is how the pricing is they have a killer deal on their hands really absolutely absolutely i mean the only thing that that we have to think about now a the do we see do we see no these are the same motorcycles in different colors then oh are they <laughs> oh. anyways we will not keep you waiting we have to you know, go ahead and try to try to figure out how Uh, whatever happens with this, but I think that's that's been it. I yeah, think that's yeah. what we've that's, discussed. That's uh, what we wanted to discuss today. Yeah. If uh, there's anything you feel that you know we should have covered in this uh, podcast, or if there's something you, you would want us to cover in the next podcast, uh, you can hit us down in the comments. You can follow us on uh, Instagram. We are at the Zengin. That's T H E Z E W N G I N E. You can DM us there. Uh, you can go to our website. That's www. Uh, zengin dot in z e w n g i n e dot in. Yeah. Um, I think that covers this uh, podcast. Yeah, we'll see you soon. We'll see you soon. Uh, to keep uh, you know in check with all of the content that we are posting, and we are tr- really trying to keep up with the content that yeah. we post. Do hit the subscribe button uh, and hit the bell notification icon so that you get to know every time we post a video. We are doing a fabulous build on series on yeah. this uh, R1. We've done two episodes on it. Uh, we are. I'm going to leave. I leave the some. Uh, I leave a uh, link to in the i card somewhere up there. Uh, do watch that. It's an exciting series. We are. Uh, And I'm going to do a revelation. The owner has decided to keep the motorcycle, oh, yeah. uh, and <laughs> we are going to <laughs> we are going to st- we are going to shoot the third episode uh, soon. So it is definitely going forward, and it's going to be a fun build. So yep. stay tuned for that, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.